This week on Across the Arrowverse, the legends showed us a dystopian vision of the future. Arrow showed Star City is racially colorblind. The Flash started its big picture story, and Supergirl made a curious discovery on Mars. Hi and welcome to Across the Arrowverse. I'm your host Matthew Vos and I'm joined as always by Catherine Kay. Hi everyone. We had four very different episodes this week. Um, I think I'm going to start on Flash. Yeah. Which did a lot of different plots moving forward, particularly some of the big picture stuff, some of the, the season arcing stuff, um, as well as lots of the, the, the minor characters getting a bit of movement and getting development. Yeah, and I think above all for me, this week Flash had a lot of fun. Mm. Um, So many exciting little interludes and just things that made me laugh out loud. Okay, like what? Flash slipping on the marbles just uh, <laughs> appealed to my inner child um, and the, the aborted um, wedding due to the allergic <laughs> reaction to the incense. Um, Was that cinnamon incense? Apparently so, <laughs> yes. Flash handcuffing himself, that made me mm-hmm. laugh. And yes, just really good fun. And I, I also have actually written down here, Goose! <laughs> I can't remember why. Goose. <laughs> Goose. That's. The- I, I loved that moment with the. No one's going to get two gooses, go- two geese flying into their plane engines. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, just just so much fun. Oh, and the laser quest bit at the beginning that yeah. was great. Yeah. Really nice. I've, I've been meaning to mention this over the last couple of weeks. I like that we've gotten to a stage where each show references the other shows in very minor ways. So Legends had. A flashback where you saw the end of Flash, the Speed Force attacking um, Central City in the background of on someone's TV, mm. where you had, in Flash, them going to therapy and there was a newspaper that talked about Oliver Queen being the Green Arrow. Yeah. It's not big mentions, it's not in, in-depth in cameos or anything, it's just, yeah, we exist in the same world, so let's show references to yeah, it. Yeah, I like that too. Perfect. And, and the moment of Cisco. Flash, you have failed this city. Yeah. <laughs> Barry, you have failed this city. So much fun. Yeah. So much fun. Wonderful. We, the, the one other that I quite enjoyed, which I think is feeding into the big picture, is the moment of Cecile saying to Joe, this house is... Or, no, with the plumber saying to Joe, this house is... Bitchin'? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I, I still feel like that's going to come to something. That's going to be a, a significant... Line. Well, well, that 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 to me was the two beat that, that you're always talking mm-hmm. about in like things coming three beats. Yeah. So perhaps later in the series we're going to have a more more climactic or more important three beat with that phrase. This house is bitching. Mm, I like that. So you never know. The the big picture stuff was particularly the introduction of the bus metters, who were actually called the bus metters. Yep. Which dibs on that band name. <laughs> <laughs> I, I quite like it. I like the fact mm. that they go, hey, look, we've got these boxes. These are going to be most of the episodes we're having. This is our framework for this series. Yeah. Oh, and there's a big bad in the background. Yes. I, I, I don't have a problem with... I mean, I don't expect that the overarching arc is necessarily going to be as straightforward as that. Mm-hmm. But equally, I wouldn't really have a problem with it if it was. Because mm-hmm. uh, for me, Flash delivers exactly what I want out of a superhero show. Yeah. Fun, entertainment, uh, characters I care about, linked together in some sort of overarching plot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I think it could carry the season, but I suspect this is a half season. Because right. you'd imagine some of the people on the bus might have been together. Yeah. So we might see a, a few as a group. Mm. Um, but yeah, this will probably carry us through to Christmas, and then there will be some reveal over what the big bad guy is planning. Yes, yes, because why is he so interested in these mm. people? Why does he even know about them? And and who is he in his sinister black chair? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, we had a couple of nice references to the wider DC universe, the return of HR. Is yes. It, this is, no, this is Harry. This is Harry. Harry. HR is the one that died last season. Yes. The, um, this is the least irritating version of Wells to yeah. me. Oh, yeah. Easily the best one. Yeah. A, a little bit misanthropic, curmudgeonly. But with a heart of gold. But heart of gold and incredibly capable. Yeah. And it's good to have the, the, on the team someone who is just, let's just get stuff dealt with. Yeah. So... And I also I love the chemistry between him and Cisco because mm-hmm. with all of the ha- all of yeah. the all of the Wellses so let's call them Wellses <laughs> with all of the Wellses obviously there's been this relationship with Cisco even going back to um, the very first series yeah. where where Sinister Wells had this sort of father son relationship yes. with Cisco but I feel that this relationship has kept its spark kept mm-hmm. its chemistry. And also, this Wells doesn't make me want to throw things at the TV. I really was yeah. not a fan of last season's Wells. No. Albeit, I, I remain in awe of the actor. I think he does an amazing yeah. job. Yeah. not He's not having to do Tatiana Maslany, Orphan Black. Everyone is a fundamentally different look and feel and type. But you really can tell the difference between them. Mm, they with are, just they some are, small touches. They are different mm, people. And, yeah. I, and, I, and I like that. I don't believe that his daughter would have kicked him out of out of the out of yeah. the planet. <laughs> yeah. Know? Get off my earth. <laughs> <laughs> Get off my earth. <laughs> Get off my earth. I can't do accents. <laughs> um I like him turning up with a breakup box. Yes. Which feels like those shouty letters from Harry Potter. But his reference to stupid At- Atlantean plastic. So a slight Aquaman reference in there. Mm. Again, like last week's uh, Bruce Wayne reference. Yeah. Great. I just... It- it's supposed to be a consistent universe, so I like it. Yeah. Uh, I disliked the reference to millennials. I feel that... Um, when he was talking oh, I about this, yeah. yeah, when he's talking about Jesse kicking him off the team and mm. talking about them all being millennials, I, I, and perhaps it's due to the conference I went to the other week, but I'm just totally <laughs> over everybody talking about millennials. It feels fairly overused now. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. Gen, Gen Z is where it's at. The, <laughs> the, the current fourteen year olds, <laughs> exactly. and then Gen Alpha, the seven year olds beneath them. Indeed. Oh indeed. yes. Um, the question that I asked for most of this plot, most of this story, where's Wally? <laughs> yes, me too. <laughs> Which, where was Wally? <laughs> like, and it, I, I'm glad they did something about it at the end, but hey, Barry's fallen over and is stuck and we can't get anyone to him, except we have another speedster. Yeah. So it was really random they didn't think of him. I, I, as I say, I like that they explained it, but I just feel... It stretches my incredulity a little. Yeah, I guess it didn't ring true, but possibly is is one of the reasons that that happened because Cisco was distracted with the new Wells. Mm. Um, what's her face? Iris. Iris. I, I was wanted to call her Irene. Then. I don't know who <laughs> Irene is. <laughs> I always call her Lily. So, <laughs> oh, fair. but Iris was off running around trying to do wedding stuff, mm. and and like the, the it was the Wally Cisco Iris team yeah. whilst Flash was gone. So perhaps with Flash back and Iris distracted and Cisco distracted, yeah. it was very easy for Wally to drop out of the forefront of their minds as their second stream hero. Mm. Um, and I, I quite like the fact that he was like, guys, I, I don't have a place here. Yeah, I, I'm going to go off and join the Legends of Tomorrow. Well, possibly so. <laughs> he, he references Blue Valley, which is where the the original Wally West comes from in the comics. Mm. Um, I'm not sure. That's not something we've ever addressed. It's not like it's somewhere that Arsenal went to from Arrow or, or any other second tier characters gone to. So uh, it, it meant nothing to me. I, it's only you know it's only yeah. through you knowing the comics that I have any, any recognition so. of Blue Valley. Um, and then we have the two relationships that cracked on this week. So we had some interesting stuff between Barry and Iris. Iris? Iris. 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 <laughs> um, Barry and Iris with her desperately wanting to get married, which yeah. was kind of played for jokes, but is also a legitimate concern. Yeah. But yes, they should want to move on because their lives are very strange. <laughs> I also thought, dude, you've got a venue booked. You're just going to cancel it and book another venue. Yeah. Have you not heard of the concept of deposits? Six, six weeks before... <laughs> the wedding. The wedding. Why uh, have you not got a venue? Exactly. 
<laughs> Possibly a subject too close to our hearts. Possibly so. Um, <laughs> and you had Cecile and Joe. Yes. Which is a great relationship. Yes. And I love it. And I love yeah. that she doesn't have anything going on. Uh, we'll come to Maggie and Supergirl in a bit, but mm. I like that Cecile is just nice and, and a good person and, and a useful person on the team. Yeah, yeah no, I, I totally agree. I, I I feel the, hey, suddenly she's pregnant bit at the end. Well, <laughs> we're, we're, well, we'll see where that goes. Yeah. Feels a little bit forced for for old and tired gag a little bit i yeah. don't know i don't know but but meh. maybe it's just because i like to see the people i like having nice happy times yeah that itself does not for a compelling tv series make so yeah. maybe one day someone will make me a tv series of people catherine like having safe and happy lives <laughs> but i don't think it will have much of an audience yeah no um <laughs> I, I, I suspect it's going to turn out Joe is happy with it, but pregnancy is a very difficult thing to do on TV and on action TV. So, so what are they now going to have this season with her being pregnant, maybe giving birth as the finale, and then they have to consider the baby all the time? Well, no, at that point you have to ship the baby off somewhere, you have to have it impacted by time travel, so you get another character out of it, or you need to have the big bad take over the baby so the baby is always going to be super powerful or always going to be evil or... There's going to be some kind of meta weirdness to do yeah. with the baby, isn't there? Because you can't just have her be pregnant and then have a baby and then... Because writing for a baby is difficult and boring. Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> that it'll be interesting to see what comes to that. Yeah. Um, but the big story of the week was our new villain, Hazard, Lady Luck. Who we quite liked. Yeah. Um, I think she was a lot of fun. Mm. I, I feel, I, we've said this a little bit recently on, on some of the shows, she hasn't done anything heinous enough to be a villain yet. Mm. She's not killed anyone, she's stolen a bit of money from a corporation, so we can live with that. But but it is almost like her meta power mm. is a double-edged sword, a bit like the Midas touch. Yes. You know, because it doesn't feel that she can actively control it. No. Other than attempt not to use it mm -hmm. or just sit in a padded cell locked up so she can't inadvertently yeah. harm people it, it doesn't feel like a particularly it doesn't feel like a particularly useful power unless you have absolutely no morals yeah yeah it'd be, it'd be interesting to see what if she was trying to do something good and the villains were slipping on marbles and freezing each other and yeah, it could be know. it could be fun for a, an episode yeah yeah um it reminded me there's an episode of DS9 where basically this thing happens and, and certain uh, particles on the station start spinning in sync mm -hmm. and some people get huge amounts of luck um, and it goes against the casino and all this and, and there is just a great sequence through it of Bashir and O'Brien playing uh, effectively squash together. Yeah. You know, 24th century squash. Um and Bashir is much younger and fitter, so beats O'Brien every time. But then O'Brien starts getting the luck thing to the extent that you hit the ball against any wall and he holds his hand up and the ball goes into it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Can we play that type of squash? Well, yeah, that I would do. That would yeah. be fine. So moving on to Supergirl, Far From the Tree. Oh, I didn't name the episodes at the beginning, did I? Uh, that was Flash, Luck Be a Lady. So Supergirl episode three was Far From the Tree. So it already sets us up that this is going to be something about parents. And particularly the stories this week were about fathers. Yeah, and difficult father relationships. Mm. Although interesting that John Johns's father relationship wasn't a difficult relationship. It was just getting through everything he'd gone through. Yes. So that was agreed. interesting. Um, Carl Lumbly showed up on screen and I was overjoyed and triumphant. He's a wonderful actor. He's the... Um, partner of Sydney Bristow at the beginning of Alias. Oh, yeah. oh yes, and, yes, and we yes, love yes. him in Alias. Yes, he's great. Yes. But he's also this is you know how Supergirl's Earth adoptive mother turned up, and it's the original Supergirl. Carl Lumbly is the voice actor for the Martian Manhunter. Is he now? He is. He oh. he all through the Justice League animated in some of the video games in some of the directed video movies. He has always been the Martian Manhunter. 
So it's DC doing what DC has always done, and I love it, and it makes me so very happy. I I must say, I mean, I I didn't recognise him because Mm. I'm rubbish at that sort of stuff. (laughs) But what I did recognise was he brought a real sense of quality to the Mm. role, and I was very pleased that my initial prediction of he's dead by the end of the episode um, (laughs) proved to be um, incorrect. Because I'm I'm quite interested to see what he does on Earth. I, I don't. I'm going to put another negative prediction in here. I don't see him being a consistent member of the gang beyond, certainly beyond this series, maybe not beyond a few episodes. I can possibly see him ending up back on Mars with the the rebel white Martians doing something or other. But I think he will come and I, I think that will be a way of, of of not overusing him Mm -hmm. without necessarily killing him off. Like they're doing with, Megan. <laughs> I suspect he will be in a few episodes this season sporadically. Yeah. Is the one way they could use him and, and whether he gets in trouble or he doesn't adapt to Earth and the stories we've done with other characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I'd like, you, you say a really good thing about him going back to Mars. The Martian rebels win the White Martians and they realise they need to change the past of their people and they need some spiritual leadership and he's the one who can go and give it to them. That would be quite nice. That would be that nice. Would be and actually nice. change the nature of the White Martians. Mm. But that's also us wanting people to have happy and secure lives. And I, I was um, I was pleased that the hot-headed young yep. White Martian rebel who at the start... Till Al. Till, till Al. <laughs> till Al. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was very pleased that by the end he actually proved to be... Or purported himself to yeah. be a decent guy. Yeah. Because at the start, I thought, okay, uh, stereotype, yeah. angry young man, rebel. He's going to do something irritating and shoot someone in the face by the end of the episode. Yeah. My predictions were off this episode. Well, well, that... <laughs> My dark predictions. Yes. Yeah. I I liked the whole Mar- the the Martian the rebel idea and the fighting idea. It was good. Um, again, stretching my incredulity about the. I'll walk in there looking like a human. Oh, it's our custom to show ourselves like humans. Oh, like, no, no, that's just you saving money on CG. Yeah. Just, I, just get on with it. I, I also, I, I did not need the spurious explanation. Yeah. I don't care. <laughs> you know? <laughs> show yourself in whatever form you like. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Supergirl was largely sundry to the story. Yeah, she really was, wasn't uh, she? She was a nice support, but this was not her episode. And then back on Earth, we had Maggie and Alex um, dealing with Maggie's father and trying to um, come back together there, which, which was a really interesting... The, the whole story was interesting because it was... It felt very excessive, the story that she told about him basically rejecting her when she came out as gay and him then suddenly coming back into her life and then him walking away again. It, it felt excessive, but they did it very well. You could understand the different aspects of the story they were trying to tell, and him talking about how he had struggled to fit in and, and never been accepted as a Mexican, and then paralleling that to her story, but not being able to understand her. Mm. We we have some empathy with him, but but we don't sympathise. Yeah, I, I, I get that. I, I guess it's a an explanation, not an excuse. Yes, So it doesn't yes. excuse his behaviour, but it sort of gives you a bit of an insight into where he thinks he's coming from. Yeah. Um, I, I was a little concerned as to where this was going, mm-hmm. because at first I was thinking, oh God, is this going to be some kind of forced um, happy ending? And like the note yeah. I made was, I'm going to have more respect if the show demonstrates her creating a, her own family to be happy yeah. and successful in who's yard rather than some kind of potentially unrealistic forced happy ending mm-hmm. um and i think they they did did that quite well a little heavy-handed but i, I don't know it's it's you know it, it yeah. ended in a way that i was comfortable with and then i was suddenly uncomfortable again with alex showing what to me seems a little bit of immaturity in overly focusing everything that's going on with Maggie and Maggie's emotions yeah. on her desire to have children. I, I yeah. really think those two just need to sit down and talk about that properly yeah. and openly rather than Alex sort of just pushing on it and pushing on it. it yeah. Alex is disappointed. They are writing Alex's character, to me, 
mm-hmm. to be potentially younger and more emotionally mature mm-hmm. than I thought she was. Yeah. But I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I, yeah, I, I agree. I feel like they're getting all the narrative juice they can out of Maggie. And I'm not sure how long she's going to be around for. No, I, I don't see this wedding going ahead. No. Oh, I, I think we might get to wedding day. But I think everything might come to a head. For oh, reasons. Are we Xander and Anya? I, we might be. Right. Um, I just... It really does feel like they're trying to get everything they can out of it. So, it, we'll, we'll see. Yeah. But, mm-hmm. Um, so, we, we need to track the children conversation. See what happens with that. We need to track John's father mm. and see what happens with him. And we need to track this staff of... Oh, yes. The, the, McGuff- the MacGuffin of the Week. Yes, because that, that's back on Earth with them. I, I think they took it to Earth rather than, you know, throw it into the sun. Oh, if yes. If it's a super powerful oh, weapon. Oh, yes, because of course... Yeah, yes, because that, that's what um, young... McGon. Tilal. Oh, Tilal. 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 <laughs> said was too powerful for either side to have. Yeah, so I'll give it to the Greens. So I'll give it to Supergirl <laughs> to, like, you know, twirl around like a bat on Yeah. Earth. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. But yes, I think that's in a vault in the D.E.O. D.E.O., maybe of... the Fortress of Solitude. Maybe. Because that would be the place. Yeah. But we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. It, Does... tra- always, it's like tracking Infinity Stones. Yeah. Do, do you think Supergirl's been given a sock drawer by Superman in the Fortress <laughs> well, of Solitude? We've been to it. This is true. We have this been is to true. it because it has a giant golden dwarf star key. It does. <laughs> yeah, Which like, I love. Yeah, it's great. Do you know what I also love? Go on. John's car. Oh, sorry. John's, John's car. car. Yeah. <laughs> love it. <laughs> yeah. Again, shades of um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Coulson's red car. Yeah. yeah. But it's it's a nice joke. It's always fun seeing um, men who internalise a lot having a passion. Yeah. And that's nice. He clearly cares about this thing, so... And I think they're making, I, I'm about to use a word that's the wrong word for it, but I think they're making Ja'an um, a lot more human this season. Yes, yeah. You know, he, there's, there's, his his sort of cold, impassive face yeah. is kind of, he, he's warmed up a bit. He's, mm. I mean, and we've seen that, you know, cause gradually, like last season, he made the relationship and the relationship, friendship, whatever we're having yep. there with, with Megan. <laughs> um yeah, but yeah, I, I, I'm liking John this season. Yeah, uh, the, the, yeah, he's a he's a souped up John. Yes, basically. Yeah, and, and it's good. He's still the supporting character. And whilst this was a John story, it wasn't about him losing his powers and keeping secrets. Yes, or, or something fairly obvious. It was, and he found a way to get through to his father, yes. and it worked. Yeah. Great. Can I just say? Yep. I th- I was surprised that we didn't have a three beat with the difficult father relationships mm. with um, Alex and Kara's step. Well, Alex's dad, Kara's stepdad, somehow being referenced in there. Yeah, because he. I don't know where he is now. He went off with the evil organization. I don't know if he came back in the end. I would assume not, because yeah. otherwise they would have done something. Something to look into, because yeah. there was definitely a thing with Dean Kane. I think he went off with. We Who knows? Say. Who okay. knows? Dean, um, where are you? <laughs> yeah. um, right, Legends of Tomorrow. The episode was Zari, who was our new member of the team, potentially, who is Muslim, which is illegal. Very subtle there, Legends. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, and in a future where metahumans are not to be allowed to be out and on the streets. Yeah. Um, I, I like the world they were creating. Yeah. So sort of we, we've gone past the what would happen if metahumans started being illegal. And into this is that world. Mm. Um, Amaya was great. Yeah, the stuff yeah. With Amaya, we really, really liked. I liked some of the comedy, and this was quite good. Mm-hmm. The the moment of oh, it's a prison break. I like it. Yes, <laughs> great. <laughs> yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. Nate. Oh, please get rid of Nate. Irritating yeah. as heck. Yeah. Amaya can do better than that. No wonder she ran off to nineteen forty two. They they. He has a superpower. He has a very useful superpower. He's one of the only metahumans on that team. But they didn't use him for that this week. They used him for a silly, obvious gag. Because this is the slightly meathead show that goes for the slightly obvious stuff. But then you had people on Earth being hunted or or attacked for being metahuman who weren't metahuman. Yeah. So the show's logic kind of fell down a lot. But overall, I found this an enjoyable episode. Yeah. Um, 
a bit of a nothingness. Mm. I, there's not, no, I mean, to be honest, I've only written three notes. <laughs> I don't know if that was my state of mind when we were watching it or the show itself. Yeah. Um, but it's not leaving me with huge amounts of lasting impressions, apart from I hate Nate, I like the new girl, mm. I like Amaya now. Um, I, I'm interested to see where it's going with Amaya and this new girl and their totems. Yeah. I'm, I'm act, and which just surprises me mm. because at the beginning of the series, I was like, oh, I hope Amaya doesn't come back because yeah. that Nate Amaya relationship story was massively irritating. Yeah, but actually, but perhaps that's the <laughs> that's the um, it's Nate him not her, yeah. least favorite character of the week. Well, maybe. <laughs> There was a great line from Professor Stein, who did nothing this weekend, but he did say that mysticism is science we don't understand yet. Yep, yep. That's a nice line. Yep. I, li- I like that as a, 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 a adaptation of the sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Yeah. That was nice. I think there was the overly fo- forced insertion of Zeitgeist phrases number two in this one. So we had millennials in um, Flash mansplaining in Legends yeah. used really awkwardly really badly just trying to lever it in yeah. and it's like well can we not just talk about people patronising you yes. rather than <laughs> <laughs> rather than unnecessarily attributing it to any gender yeah, yeah. Um, on the quotes we had Gideon saying oh bollocks and <laughs> what a bitch which was surprising They they feel like Slightly stronger swear words than I would expect and use. I mean, not not the most strong. It's not Star Trek Discovery. Let's you know, step away from that. I am wondering, and maybe no, no. Let's 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 move on from wondering. I'm hoping mm. that this is part of a bigger story storyline about Gideon, not mm. necessarily going wrong, but mm-hmm. but developing a stronger sense of sense, self and control. I mm. mean, sentience, sentience, yeah. exactly. And and I think I think we have seen. She became Multiple. human. Exactly. You know, last, last there, there are lots of indications of sentience with Gideon. Yeah. And I wonder if they're going to start to really lean into that in yeah. this series. Mm. Because that is not a that is not an AI playing by the rules type of exclamation. Yeah. No, absolutely. So yeah. so that was an interesting moment. Um, and I also picked up on in one of the fights one of the characters going, I can do this all day. Yeah. <laughs> Which is Captain America's catchphrase. Yeah, so nice. that's an interesting bit of cribbing coming across there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that quite counts as plagiarism. Uh, I liked the It style ending, leaning into what might be a Goonies, It, Stranger Things next week with Ray Palmer in a water outlet. Oh, yes. Yeah. I like that. Yes, yes, yes. So that's Legends. Yep. Good. Let's move on. Arrow. I've made two notes about Arrow. Yeah. The landing with the car and Black Canary shouting him across the gap was was <laughs> not a sustainable way to jump. <laughs> Poor Diggle, you're going to be so bruised. <laughs> yeah. And the fact that when they were trying to name their startup, they had Oracle, but they'd scratched it out. Mm. Shame. But also there was a company called Oracle anyway, or a system. Yeah. Um, Arrow just wasn't good, I think. I think it flounders a lot for me, and I struggle to be invested with these characters. Yeah. I, no, I, and I think that's the point for me. Mm. I think there is a decent story mm-hmm. and a decent plot in there, mm-hmm. fighting to get out, but I just don't care anymore. Yeah. I don't want this to be Matthew and Catherine snark about Arrow no. every week. You know, come to Arrow at the end, oh, well, that was terrible, let's move on. I, I want us to be able to discuss it so... Are there elements of it that we like and can try and grab onto our shining lights to get us through each week? Or are there characters where we want to see things that we can try and get involved where they've lost us previously, but fine, let's draw a line under it and come back into it now? I think what they do well in Arrow, Mm -hmm. and, and something that I can talk about positively, is actually develop their characters and how the characters, so Oliver Queen in particular, I I really enjoy that we actually have seen his approach to the world and what's important to him mm. and what levels of responsibility for things he's willing to take really actively change and develop in a believable way mm-hmm. um, over the series. I really like that. So that's something that how they approach character development and how they change their character is, is something I feel like I can talk about positively. Yep. I love Felicity, so okay, I can always yeah. talk about Felicity positively. I'm, I'm yeah. fascinated by their startup. 
Yeah, because that's it's such a minor thing, but it is the most interesting bit for me. That's the bit yeah. that I want to see them doing stuff with. Yeah. I, either the startup or them developing weapons and doing stuff. Yeah. But her and Curtis? Yes. Yeah, are, are the most interesting characters. Yeah. So, all the characters that haven't lost me yet. Uh, and Oliver Queen's son, when he's interacting mm. with Felicity, suddenly becomes a much nicer and more... A boy that I'm more willing to see on the screen. I'm yeah. not interested. To, I'm not interested in looking at sulky teenagers. Yeah, boys. he loses the petulance. Yeah, mm. and, and suddenly he becomes quite a quite an eloquent, intelligent young lad. Yeah, okay. So you know, I think so. I think there's stuff we can do about the characters. I didn't. I can see that there was a need for an episode to show Diggle transitioning into leadership. Okay. I felt it was a little heavy-handed mm-hmm. and. Slightly unbelievable, in, in yeah. entire you know. So I, for, for me, it wasn't the right transition episode, but I can see that in the overall arc of passing on the mantle of leadership of the mm-hmm. vigilantes, I can see why they wrote that story. Yeah. Um, I would be interested to see the Diggle character develop and carry on yeah. over the series and see whether his character changes in this. See, uh, uh, and you say that, and I go, yes, that would be great. But then I think, oh, but he's keeping secrets. Oh, I want so, to, yeah, and that's the thing. For we were talking about this the other week, forced drama through, yeah. through in you know implausible secrets. Mm. Because the thing is, his his injury isn't even that secret. No. Dinah knows all about it, and and whilst I get that she might be keeping quiet out of some kind of misplaced loyalty to Diggle, mm-hmm. he's not a stupid man. No, they've written him. As a stupid man, this, a little this bit, episode. Yeah. Too proud. And... I, I, yeah, I'd almost forgotten about the whole shady drugs in the back alley yeah. um, scene at the end. I want it to be Mirakuru. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so, so Diggle I have a hard time latching on to, as I do with Wild Dog. Rene. Rene. And the cop thingy Lance, who's now Deputy Mayor. I'm sometimes an alcoholic, sometimes not yeah. Lance. The, the, there are a few characters I, I I find it hard to really get behind their stories or their moments in the stories because I just go, oh, you're, you're you're not fun to watch. Yeah. So I think what I might treat as the framework for our, our discussions is, hey, what's Felicity been up to this week? Yeah. Oliver and his son's relationship, and probably what has Oliver been doing in his new role? Because I I love what they're doing with it. This is what I, I think I said a couple of weeks ago. I like the Green Arrow as a Sort of minor superhero. He doesn't really have superpowers. He's just skilled at a bit of fighting things. But he's very good at talking to people and being very rational and down to earth. Mm. So if we see a lot more of that, I'll enjoy it. And, and I, I feel like they might do. I uh, can we add to that? Can we add to that my new girl crush? Go on, um, Agent Watson. Is she called Watson? The FBI lady. Okay. I love the FBI lady. Agent Watson, FBI. Yes. Ooh. Yeah. Yes. So what's Agent Watson been up to this week? Yeah, it feels like there's more to that story than we're being told. Yeah. Possibly about her and her reasons, but generally what her investigation actually is. So yes. that's good. Yeah, okay. So we're going to treat Arrow as Felicity, Oliver, Oliver's son, Agent Watson, and see what the story around them is. Yes. Yeah. yes. So we, we, we shall not get distressed or bothered by implausible plot and... Yeah. Um, overarching misery yeah if next week it's a lance and renee story we'll talk about how it affects the people we like and exactly. then hopefully through doing that they'll redeem the other characters can i just say one thing you that can. fascinated me this this <laughs> week we're not bothering showing Thea asleep in a hotel hospital bed. <laughs> no, <we're not. laughs> but every now and then we'll just mention her. Yeah. Just 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 to try and make sure people don't forget her. Yeah. So is is she like having a baby in real life or is she having a nice holiday? I, got another I do role? not know, I'm afraid. But it feels like they're just putting her on ice for a while. Yeah. And then they'll bring her back back later when, when she can be bothered. I she'll, don't know. <laughs> and she'll be evil now. Because oh, no. it's DC. No, no. Okay, let's go back. Let's scratch that whole <laughs> thirty seconds. Let's go back to just focusing yeah. on Felicity Oliver and Agent. We Watson. can have her, Wally, and Roy Arsenal going off to Earth nineteen and joining Superman in Metropolis. I'd forgotten about Roy. What, I like Roy. What happened to him? Yeah, in the end? I want him back. So I really liked him in the end. So yeah, he came back and helped, and then he went off again. 
He's kind of a, a sort of Nightwing equivalent, I think, now. Doing yeah. his own thing in other cities. So Maybe maybe that is what's going to happen. Maybe. Me and Thea are going to go off and have a spin-off show. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> so then we can have a whole channel where 24 hours a day, yeah. all they show <laughs> is... The, you know, <laughs> okay, who had the best week? I think Ja'an. Ja'an. Because he, he got his daddy back. <laughs> yes, I would agree as well. I, I felt he gave up a little bit too quickly initially with his father, but he did approach that with the patience and distance that was needed to deal with it. Yes. So I think that came through well. Uh, which episode do you think was best? Flash. Yeah? Yeah. The the fun of it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she was a good new character. Although they, they said that she was 24. And the actress <laughs> who played her was the same 24. age as me. She is a lot older than 24. <laughs> But this is the CW. Everyone has to be young and flawless and pretty, so. <laughs> um, and I think, had you already said who had a really bad week? Oh, I had a car. Remember oh, who Nate. I said that? Na- oh, that, yeah, oh Nate. must be Nate. Always yeah, Nate. Must be Nate. Always Nate. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, I feel a little bit with Legends. I'd like them to move on from where they were in season one because Rory is largely the same character except he does good now but doesn't say he does good. Um, so that's not interesting. Fresser Stein and, and Jefferson should have become Firestorm several times in this episode and didn't. Mm. So is is Professor Stein, v- Vincent Garber, not around anymore? Is Quite he possibly. not available too often? Part-time working pre-retirement? Yeah. So I just feel like with Legends there's so much potential there and it's just done as the silly show that doesn't pay itself too much attention. Mm, it's not not quite hitting, not quite hitting the, the the things it could hit. Yeah, as you say, lots of potential. Yeah, and Rip Hunter, that they're not really using him very much. No, anymore. Arthur Darville's gone. Yeah, and it's, it's all down about... Time Prefect Sharp, who is now going to kill them when she sees them. Her and Gary. Oh rubbish. Yeah, I. Oh rubbish. Let's let's get this dealt with. Let's yeah. stop antagonising them because there's clearly more stuff going on. So that wraps us up for another week. If you have thoughts, questions, or comments, you can use the hashtag ATAV on Twitter or find us on Facegram, Instagram, and Twitter as Eloquent Gushing. If you want to help support us, please check out our Patreon page where you can get access to exclusive content across all our shows or go to patreon.com slash eloquentgushing and visit the homepage eloquentgushing.com to sign up for the weekly newsletter with the goings on across all the shows. Thanks for listening and we'll see you across the Arrowverse. Across the Arrowverse is an Eloquent Gushing production. For more shows you'll love, please visit eloquentgushing.com. Magan. Magan. <laughs> In fact, I must remember to call... I must remember to call John Ja'an. Ja'an. <laughs> Ja'an. Magan. Um, Ja'an. 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 J-A-A-J-N. <laughs> how, do I, how would I do that in a British accent? Ja'an. 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 I don't know. <laughs> Ja'an. John. 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 <laughs> John. John. Let's just call him John. Okay. Yeah. <laughs>